Uh, now I'd like to turn to Dave Silvernail for his scenery segment on rocks and weathering. So Dave, welcome, and thank you so much for doing this. All right, now I need to get my uh, one. Is, I think it's this one. Yep. Dang it. Thing cross tops hiding, so I can't really start the. There we go. <clears throat> Dave, All right. So tonight's is on rock molds. And scenery in the mountainous areas are full of rocks from cliffs to just rock outcoverings, or even a gigantic rock faced mountain and everything in between. On a trip I took to Maine in 2016 for a narrow gauge convention, I even found rock formations at the rivers up in Maine. Dave, can you, that, Dave can you make your slide the full screen so maybe see it better? That's what I was trying, and it didn't seem to want to. Play okay, okay. Let me try this again. Uh, Dave, if you go, go to the little screen, right? There you go. I got it. There you go. Thank you. Okay. For this segment, I'll show a couple of scenes and lead you to the rock molds. And then we will start uh, with the molding process with the plaster with a couple of the hows and whys of what we are doing. Currently, we're working on a friend's layout. This right here is one side of a module that I built. This is a Colorado scene. And I probably have five or six different molds on this one. This is the other side of that module, which is a California, oh, what is it? A, Feather River Canyon scene. So this is more granite and less uh, iron content. This is a one of two modules from a friend of mine in the club I'm in. He scratch built the, I uh, was at the stamp mill. And then we went ahead and put together the rock molds to, you know, in, enclose this. Second part of this thing shows a small abandoned mill, which is actually covering the scenic break between the two modules. And this is his second module. He built this beautiful uh, mine right here. And he's looking to figure out how to put it on the uh, module. And he's looking down next to the tracks. And I finally told him, you need to elevate that thing. It's too big. So we built the mountain up, put the mine up on top and put it all together. Same thing, these are Bragdon molds and I use the Bragdon uh, geodesic foam setup for all of this stuff. So rock molds and I've got rock molds. I've got two of these uh, 36 inch long under the bed uh, uh, containers with at least 40 different molds. And they're all Bragdon's. Some of them are pretty huge. This one's about 32 inches across by about 14 tall. Some just a little bit smaller, but with a lot of relief on them. I've got a, mold for, a mold for a wall. This one here, which is real light color, is one of the newer molds I've bought, so it hasn't aged hardly at all. The rest of these are probably anywhere from six to 10 years old, and they do start to age a little bit. Here I've got four different rock, uh, uh, what, uh, rock wall, or block wall molds. 
And this is a real interesting one that I found that he had, and it just has a whole lot of different leaf to it. This one here I bought for use on the, what was it, Feather River Canyon site on my uh, module, because this is more of what I find up in the Sierras or straight, uh, bait, uh, straight walls with not a whole lot of relief to them. And this is the biggest mold I have. This one is 46 inches across and 13 and a half inches tall. And that's for a G a gauge or an F scale um, block wall. And Bragdon Enterprises has this material called Magic Bullet. And it basically feels like Vaseline once it's dry. I use it on the molds when I first buy them. It's kind of a treatment you know, for the latex rubber. And when I'm doing the molding with the Bragdon stuff, I only have to use it about every fourth or fifth time. If I feel the mold and it feels slick, like it has a, you know, feels kind of like Vaseline, I don't have to reshoot it. I can just mold off. Of it. Here I'm spraying it on one of the molds. I'm also using it to kind of help restore a mold. So what we're doing, a friend of mine is building a, an ON30 layout in a 20 by 36 basement, which is kind of strange for California, but there are some. So for the Moose County Railroad, what we did, we got the molds, plastic mixing bowls, plastic mixing spoons, plaster. It's old and we don't know what kind, but got a ladle for the scoop and a spray ball, and a spray bottle full of wet water, plus water to wash out in a bucket. Other items are assorted blocks to prop up the molds, still white vinegar to slow the plastic curing time, and newspaper to use as a filler in the plastic. So this was yesterday. We started with three molds. We set this one up in a box. And there's a reason for doing this. If you take a mold and you lay it flat and you fill it full of plaster, the center of the mold generally has more latex material in it and you will get kind of a convex uh, to, um, look to it, which rocks never work like that. Rocks always protrude out. So here's the second one. We've got blocks in and around that, trying to hold them up, get it ready to pour. And he's setting the third mold up there. What in the hell? Okay, so now we're mixing what we thought was plaster. Unfortunately, this was some, uh, what, uh, wall mud that they're that we're trying to use and the basic problem with the wall mud you put it in there and you fill up the mold as far as you want to fill it you wait about 20 30 minutes it's still wet it's not setting up so after we washed it out and figured out it was wall mud we went and washed the mold out, threw it all away and started again. So this time we found the, rare, the real plaster, although it's an old, uh, old can of plaster and we don't know what type. And so we're doing just a couple of test molds. And he's using the newspaper crumpled up to put on the back of it. He was going to put some more plaster over the top of it, but unfortunately I demolded it for him before he got to that. But this is one of the ways he uses uh, what, something to help from having to use so much plaster. So we finally got this up here. And when you put plaster in, what happens, plaster had, or, 
when you put mix it with water, it starts to cure and it's, there's a chemical reaction and it gives off a little bit of heat. So that's when you know it's working. We filled, you know, filled a couple of small spots on this big mold. We're still just kind of checking this plaster out, see if it's gonna work for us. You know, we got to a certain point, he fills it in and then he takes the hammer and he taps on it, to try to raise any bubbles. Also, oh, the other thing I forgot to say is, before we even put plaster into the mold, we spray the whole mold with wet water. And the idea being is the plaster, if there's a little bit of water on the mold, will get down into all the little crevices, nooks and crannies. If you don't do that, you'll end up with air pockets. So here we find, uh, pulled the first mold out and it worked out pretty well. Here, Dick is taking the uh, plaster out of the mold. And we got a pretty good chunk off of that one. So here's one of the molds set, or one of the castings set up, right? And here's one of the other ones. Got great relief off of it. Now, the reason we're doing this as I know, I've always heard people say, oh, you fill it full of plaster, you turn it and you put it up on the, on the wall of the, uh, that you want it on. The biggest problem with that is you turn the mold over, you can't tell which way the grain or the rock is oriented. So what we're doing for this railroad, we're gonna make up a whole bunch of different uh, castings. And then we'll just take them and we'll try to piece them in kind of like a mosaic up on the mountainside. And if we have to, we'll cut some, chip some, so we get a pretty tight fit. Then once you got it pretty well fit together, any gaps you have, we'll spray a little water in the gaps and mix up some regular wet plaster and dab it in there, blend it together. The last part, when you're done, we've got this, it's like a 10 gallon waste bucket. And we got uh, at least five, six gallons with the water in it. So we wash the mold out. Of course, we wash out the buckets and everything else. Uh, when you're molding and you're doing different pours, you don't have to wash the bucket or wash the bowl every time. As long as you're going to do another pour within, say, 10 minutes, just keep it going. When you finally get done, you wash all the stuff out and it's ready for next time. That bucket of water does not need to be changed. It'll sit there all week. Any plaster will end up settling on the bottom. It'll be good for three or four different uh, casting sessions. So that's it for today. Well, Dave, I appreciate it so very much. I look forward to uh, to next time. Um, uh -huh. There it is. Had to find the stop share. <laughs> Thank you so very much. That's great.